Hey there, cats and kitties. I am the Blues Man, Johnny Blues, and with this video, I'll be discussing briefly my thoughts on episode three of Beware the Batman, entitled Tests. And this was definitely an interesting episode and enjoyable episode, although I feel like for my money, it was still not nearly as good as episode two was. Um, in a sort of loosely best to worst of these first three episodes, I definitely have to have episode two at the top tier. With this one coming in, you know, only slightly edging out episode one as being uh, thoroughly enjoyable. You know, I felt there were aspects of this episode that could have been omitted entirely for emphasis being placed on other aspects we were seeing, you know, in the episode that I didn't feel like we got enough of. Now, the episode is called Tests, of course, and this is a multi-tiered sort of story going on. You have Bruce testing Katana effectively, this woman who has been brought in by Alfred to be his replacement, you know, basically being Bruce's driver, but also being a bodyguard, a protector, and potentially down the line, you know, she could end up being the heroine sidekick of Batman. Um, the tests that Bruce puts her through in this episode, I felt like we didn't get enough of, but I liked what we were seeing. And of course, this is only episode three, so we'll probably be getting more of that down the line. You know, they'll they'll have this drawn out story where she's finding, you know, more out about him and stuff like that. She is definitely a skilled character in that, you know, she goes through the obstacle course they lay out, which actually recalled to my mind uh, the series Teen Titans when they brought Terra on and she had to go through their obstacle course. Although, of course, you have Katana just kicking its ass and um, she's so slick in that when she finds what I thought was going to be the entrance to the back cave through the, you know, fireplace, she ends up using this sort of palm reading, you know, print device where she puts it on her hand and it's like cellophane sticky stuff. So she can gain entry to what ends up being not the back cave, but a private library of Bruce's. And it turns out this was all, you know, sort of Bruce's plan. These are the breadcrumbs he is laying out for her to, to test her mettle and see if she's worthy of being at his side, that kind of thing. And I'm just really excited to see where that goes. I kind of wish we would have seen a little more in this episode. Um, whereas, you know, that's one side of the testing. The other side is, of course, with the villain who debuts in this episode, Anarchy. And I'm not really familiar with this character. I thought he looked like a sort of whitewashed specter, you know. I mean, he's big, beefy. He's got the sort of a uh, hood on and everything like that. He looks very ghostly. And I didn't think the voice was on par that much. I'll probably, you know, it'll probably grow on me, but I would have thought he would have had more of a baritone voice the way he looked. But um, what was interesting about this character was, even though his name is Anarchy and it means like chaos and everything like that, he did have some cerebral aspects to him and I kind of wish we would have seen more of that. Uh, he basically, in this episode, pulls a Joker from the Dark Knight, I guess he's a Christopher Nolan fan, with the bombs on the trams over the water, over the bridge and everything, and uh, testing Batman, you know, you can only say one or the other and all this stuff. Um, it was one of those things where it's like, I would have loved to have seen more of this because obviously he does have smarts, but then you result to fisticuffs and I'm really hoping we don't have this be an episodic thing where Batman has to throw down with every single villain he runs into, male or female, every episode for like five minutes, you know? Um, I, I hope we don't end up beating a dead horse with that, with him having to fight everybody. But other than that, you had these two thugs that Anarchy was setting up, and I really could have done entirely without them. I think we could have gotten a lot more emphasis on the testing between Katana and Bruce and Batman and Anarchy. You know, they didn't really impress me. I don't know what their purpose was exactly, uh, other than to just have somebody for Gordon to get a mention, you know, picking him up at the end. And um, I don't even know if they're actually DC Comics villains or not, you know, or just made for this show. But um, I wasn't really impressed with them. I thought we could have done without them. And otherwise, you know, I enjoyed the episode still. I'm still on board to see where this goes. I'm really curious to see how long it's going to be before Katana herself takes the place at Batman's side, potentially, as a heroine akin to Robin and Batgirl and all the ones who have stood at his side before. So yeah, I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments below what you thought of Episode 3 of Beware the Batman, if you've seen it. And otherwise, I hope this video finds you well, and I'll catch you later. Peace.